at reading scales. Well, reading scales have the same underlying principles that we talked about in checklists and in frequency counts, and that is that it needs to be objectively defined what it is you're measuring. So all of those concepts that we've discussed with frequency counts and with checklists apply to a rating scale. But what a rating scale is and how it's different from a checklist specifically is that it describes the degree to which the behavior is present. So when we took a look at a checklist, the behavior was either what? Say there or not there, right? It was either yes or no, present or not present. So the difference between a checklist and a rating scale is that a rating scale tells you the degree to which the behavior is present, right? Um, it offers the observer more than two choices. Which assessment tool has only two choices? Either there or not there. Which one is that? Present or not present? Yes or no? That's a, a checklist, right? So it gives you more than those two choices depending on how many choices that you put on your rating scale. A rating scale will often use a graduated scale. So zero to 10. Um, love it to hate it. No pain, excruciating pain. Okay, so use a graduated scale. It goes from one end of a spectrum to the other end of a spectrum. Um, but it's a closed method, so it doesn't address the possible cause. Just like a frequency count, just like a checklist, you don't get to see the behavior before. Okay, it's a closed method. So what is this rating scale measuring? Pain. Pain, right? So we have both a visual rating scale from a happy face to a sad face. Does that visually tell you what is being measured? Is there pain here? Is there a lot of pain here? Yeah, so it's a graduated scale. It goes from zero, no hurt, to 10. Hurts a lot, okay? Here's another one. It has no pictures, but it's the same graduated scale. No pain to severe pain. So the words are different that are being used, but it's going from one end to the, the other end. So you have more than two options. Is it asking you, is there pain, yes or no? No, right? You have more than two choices. You get to destroy describe the behavior more accurately. So you see the difference between a rating scale and a checklist? Yeah? Okay. So what is the continuum on this rating scale? Occurs frequently to does not occur, okay? So you have another option. So here's a different type of rating scale. What is it? how often, how many times did this teacher use this rating? How would you calculate that? How do you know how many times the teacher used that rating scale? We're looking at the dates, right? So there are more options to fill out a rating scale versus just checking it. Depending on how you set up the rating scale, what additional information do we get from this rating scale that we didn't get in something like this? So we got the days it happened. So we get to see the progression right here, 921. 10, 6, 11, 17. So we get to see how much time elapsed between the progression. And what also do we get to see? A little bit of details, right? But is this an anecdotal record? Do we know what he's stacking? Stacking up in piles by color. Do we know exactly what he's stacking? Do we know what the color is? Do we know if he knows the color? Do we know if he's talking during this? No. So this isn't an anecdotal record. Is it a running record? No. It's just a piece of evidence. Okay, and that's an important distinction because when we talk about DRDP, that's what a DRDP is asking you to include, is a piece of evidence. All right? 